two, one. Hey everyone, welcome. I'm here today to paint for you a winter landscape painting. Um, I love painting winter and so I'm glad that it's now finally December so I get a chance to paint some snow. So what I want to do is walk you through um, the, the process that I've taken just like this is my daily painting. You are fly on the wall in my studio and I'm going to just kind of talk as I go along and uh, I've passed on my face. <laughs> that goes with the territory. Um, so let me just show you what I'm going to paint today. Mm, right here. And this is my crummy little photo and if you follow me you know I like crummy little photos. This was taken some in Colorado. I went a couple a couple winters ago just to get snow pictures because we don't get them here in Georgia very often so I have a, a lot to work with now. Um, it's just a very simple quiet scene and that's what I want to capture the quiet moodiness of the, the, just think of the, the, the silence of a you know everything's covered in snow but yet there's still a little color which I was excited me. So the first thing I did was I made a quick little study. Now this is not really um, detailed but what it is is it shows me how my colors that I selected will work together. So here's my tray of colors that I picked. Um, actually the pink doesn't belong it was from another painting but once I pick my colors, I like to see how they're going to work before I, you know, work on my larger piece of paper. So I went ahead and just did a quick little study. And I think uh, that I am pleased with the combination that I selected, so I'll stick it up there just to remind me. The other thing that I have is my snow tray. Now, <clears throat> those of you who are on the Patreon page, um, probably have read about the snow tray. This is where I select all the colors that I'm going to use for all of my winter landscape paintings. So you can see that um, most of the, these are the lights that I'll use for snow and they are not really white. This is a pure white. This is a pure white. And these are all light value colors. And these are the colors that I'm going to use on the shadows of the snow. So we have warm blues, some violets, and then some cooler blues. And we'll use those in progression when we paint the shadows. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, draw in my design, my big simple shapes. Um, I'll start with the <clears throat> this incline of this hill kind of going down. I'm going to have to adjust the, um, the design a little bit from the photo because I don't want everything to end up right in the middle. And it, there's a big dark <coughs> tree on the left hand side and if I'm not careful that big dark tree can overpower everything else. So I have to have some sort of balance over here on the other side. And I think what's going to be the balance is going to be this little bit of distant, really bright snow in the distance. Um, it's hard to tell, I know, in the drawing, but as the painting develops, you'll be able to see. And then there's a bunch of little scrubby bushes, and I'm just kind of putting them in just so that I remember. And then what I like about this is that the snow kind of sneaks in between some of these bushes, which creates kind of an interesting pathway. I have to be careful that this corner doesn't feel cut off. So I'm going to have to bring the eye in somehow through here, and that might be a shadow that I put in. And I'm going to just do that, so that way the idea is I want the eye to lazily go through the entire painting. So that's what I'm thinking about when I'm laying out the, the painting. The next thing that I'm going to do is uh, do an underpainting. Oh, I should mention I'm working on UART sanded paper. This is 400 grit. I like to use 400 and 500, uh, but I'll use any of it. But this happens to be 400. What I'm going to do is I'm going to um, block in the darkest shapes first using I decided that I'm going to use yellows, and the dark yellow is actually 
Ooh, almost lost that guy. Dark yellow is actually brown. I'm going to use yellow because there's going to be so much of that golden um, um, color in some of this um, foliage and bushes and shrubby stuff. So I kind of want to establish that yellow uh, in the underpainting. So then I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of yellow up in the sky. I'm not going to keep the sky yellow, but I'll just put a little bit up there. And I'll put a little bit of yellow down in the snow. This bit of yellow, this bit in the background, I'm going to have to pull that tray up close on me, is going to be brighter. So I don't want it to be the same color. I'll put some of this yellow in here. So now I've got the entire piece of paper covered. I'm going to use a piece of pipe insulation foam. Okay to rub it all in. And if you've seen my demos before, you know that I like to rub in this um, first layer. And this is really the only time that I'm going to do any kind of blending. But I like to rub in the first layer so that I can get a very soft, out of focus underpainting. And so that I can cover up all the light parts of the paper. Which actually is not as important when you're painting snow as it is when you're painting other things. But you can see, all, by rubbing it in with this pipe insulation, you can see how I've got a really nice soft out of focus underpainting and it really gives me a head start to the painting. I mean you can see the, the design, you can see the darks, you can see the lights. So it's a really effective way to start a painting. Um, those of you who like to do wet underpaintings, it would be very easy to do it with a brush and water or alcohol or turbinoid. But to keep things simple, I just use a, what I call a dry wash. Okay, now I'm ready to um, go in to the painting. I'm going to start by reinforcing the dark areas. And I'm going to put on my glasses for this part. So there's this uh, wonderful, really dark area of trees that I like, but remember I said earlier I've got to balance it and be careful that I don't make it too dark all in the corner. So I'm using, this actually looks like it's black, but it's it's really a, a dark, dark brown, like an umber, really, really dark. And I'm going to indicate a few tree trunks while I'm at it. So I'm using the side of my pastel to create this laciness of the branches, very light touch, and then I'm using the tip of this pastel to create some uh, branches. And this is a, a happens to be a Terry Ludwig pastel. Uh, then I'm going to keep going and block in some of the uh, other really lacy trees, and I'm using a gray down violet. Now I'm using a lot of really grayed down, dull colors. We call them neutrals. Hey, I'm back. Sorry for the, the uh, little bit of technical difficulties. We actually ran out of room and we figured it out. So I'm back for part two. And let me just recap what I've done so far. I blocked in the painting uh, with some uh, values of yellow, so dark brown and some yellows, and then I started to block in the darkest areas because I want to put the lightest areas in last. That's the snow. So I want to establish all the dark areas. I'm using very dull, muted colors for the most part because I want to capture kind of that uh, m muted laciness of the trees without having to paint every tree branch. So I've got some trunks established, I've got some uh, lacy branches established, and I'm working on right now uh, establishing some of the clumps of this um, shrubby stuff that is down at the base of the trees. So I'm going to continue on with that. I, that's exactly what I was working on. I'm looking at the photo, and if you recall, one of the things that I said that I liked about the particular of this photo is I really enjoyed how some of the snow bits peeked through in between some of the shrubs. So I'm going to just put in some of the color of the shrubs right now with some of these golds, ochres, so that I have it all in place. 
Um, I'm going to use some more muted purples, grayed down muted purples. I call these the mousy colors because they're just not really bright and intense. But we really need these mousy colors if we want to establish this kind of uh, cool, moody feeling quality to our winter landscape. All right. And there's also a lot of kind of blue-gray in this one tree over here on the left. So I'm going to introduce kind of a purpley blue-gray now I'm going to take a snapshot of my tray that I'll be posting along with this video. So you'll be able to have a, uh, uh, an opportunity to get a closer look at the, the actual pastels that I've used for the painting. So don't, don't worry if you're not seeing exactly what I'm using. And it's also important to realize that we all have different palettes, right? You don't all necessarily have all the same colors that I do. So it'll be your job to find your own palette that'll work for your winter landscapes. This will just give you some ideas. All right, so I think I've got enough going on there with the um, trees and the bushes. I think what I'm going to do next is to establish the shadow areas in the snow. So I'm going to take, um, I'm going to grab this tray and bring it over here. I'm going to take some of the warmer blues, which are the turquoises. They're warmer blues, they have more yellow in them. And I'm going to lay that down at the foreground area. And then as I go into the distance, those, um, shadows will become cooler. So I'm using the cooler blue back in the kind of in the middle ground and in the distance. And anytime I can sneak a little bit of color back behind tree trunks like I'm doing here, it really helps pull those trunks forward. That's called painting with the negative spot, painting in the negative spaces. And those little tiny marks help give a little more depth to the painting. And any time I can do that, I take advantage of it. I don't always see it in the photo, but if you can try to uh, look for it or imagine where it might be, then um, it will really help improve your landscapes. So I'm establishing the darkest part of the snow first, and I'm throwing this whole foreground area into shadow and I'm pulling up that shadow color leading to those bushes. So you can see I'm trying to create a kind of suggested pathway for the viewer's eye to follow back up into the bushes and back into the trees. Um, let's see. When I get into the far distance, then the, the shadow color is a cooler and lighter blue. I'm going to just stick a little bit of that back in there. All right, now I've got the shadow colors. I think what I'm going to do now is work on the sky. <clears throat> and the sky in my photo I really, really like because it's kind of a um, muted blue-green, kind of a greenish gray. This is not a color I typically use for a sky. So it's really kind of refreshing to get to use colors that I don't normally work with. Um, and so, you know, instead of having a bright blue, brilliant sky, it's kind of fun to, to, to play around with this kind of soft, muted, mousy, beautiful sky. So I have two values of this grayed down green that I'm using. And I'm allowing the, some of that uh, yellow of that underpainting <clears throat> to peek through, which gives it a little bit more of an interest. Um, yeah, I really like that color, but it's going to get a little bit, oh, that's not right. I'm going to just pull it all the way down, and I'm going to use it to start to um, 
sneak into the trees and I'm going to use a very, very light touch. So I'm going to just very, very lightly go over the edges of those branches. And the idea that I'm trying to do with this technique is to create a feeling of that laciness without me having to paint branches. So I'm going to take the, the muted purple that was there and I'm going to take the sky color and start to just glaze it over. And so what happens is it starts to look as though I'm painting little lacy branches without me drawing them in. Uh, this is something that you can practice with and I'm going to do a more in-depth tutorial on this creating lacy branches. Uh, this is kind of a preliminary introduction, if you will, to this idea. I'm going to do the same thing over in these branches with the lighter gray-green. Now I'm going to use these same gray-greens down in the snow. And the reason why is because snow is reflective surface, so the colors that are in the surroundings will also be found in the snow. So I'm going to just repeat it. And that also helps create a um, kind of a dialogue, if you will, between the, the um, earth and the sky by using those same colors. So I'm using the brighter color that I use at the bottom portion of the sky just to create little bits and pieces of brighter snow on the shadow. So you can see by establishing the dark area first, now when I'm going on top with the lighter color, the lighter color has something substantial to hold on to. I'm just going to sneak it around. Now, back in the distance, I really enjoyed that little piece of bright snow that was peeking through uh, in the distance, like a hillside. And I'm gonna, i got to get the right color for it. I think I'm going to use this kind of, um, let's see if this is right, let me put these down. Yeah, this is a, a, a very uh, light value, kind of dull pink. And I, the snow will get a little bit warmer and more colorful in the distance. So that's why I'm using the dull pink rather than a white but I'm sneaking it back behind all of these bushes so that it represents this hillside that's sneaking behind these trees. And I'm just using little bits and pieces, so just little tiny marks, but those little tiny marks will give that impression that there's a, a hillside behind all of those trees. It's kind of... Um, and notice that I'm using what I call a shouting mark. In other words, I'm pressing very hard because I really want it to look like snow. Um, and I think really what's left now is just to um, kind of just go in and decide where I want a little more emphasis on some of these um, little pieces of scrubby stuff and I forgot to pull out my little grass box but I usually like to have the grass box because some of these things are quite um, like little sticky like twigs twiggies so I might have to go get my grass box and, and uh, finish this up but this is actually working out I had one little hard pastel. This is fine. So I'm going and making a little bit of scrubby little marks so that I can get a little more texture in these foreground um, little bits and pieces here. All right, I think you can get the idea. Uh, mainly what I wanted to get uh, come across through this demo is it's important with painting snow that you don't use necessarily pure white, use colorful lights, establish your darks first because if I tried to put this light on top of dark it works but if I had 
not enough dark, so I tried to put the dark on top of the light, it would be muddy. It wouldn't be as crisp. So establishing the darks first will allow you to get your snow to come across as much more bright and crisp. Um, and so that just does kind of a preliminary demo of painting the winter landscape, and there's much more to come this month, so I hope you enjoy it.